Hi guys, welcome back to the workshop. All done with computer work this morning. Today it is a little bit wet outside. Super wet. And we're also supposed to apparently have a, there's a wind warning, so we might have some 55 mile per hour wind here anytime now, which doesn't seem like there's gonna be wind because the trees are hardly moving, but who knows? So, first things first, I am going to light up my heater here and warm up a little bit. It's a bit chilly in here this morning. warmer already. Alright, so this is going to be a build vlog on... I almost just died. I almost tripped on a cord. Alright, so this is going to be a build vlog on uh, a router surface or table that I'm building. The customer I am building it for has nicknamed it The Beast for uh, very obvious reasons, which I'll go over here in a second. He has decided to remain anonymous until he actually has the machine in his possession so that he can do a big reveal. So this playlist is just going to be titled The Beast so that you can follow along. I'm going to try to post as often as I can and keep you up to date with where I'm at in the build. Alright, so this router surfacing table is built specifically for flattening live edge tabletops. And one of the reasons why the customer decided to nickname it The Beast is it is absolutely massive. So it is going to be 84 inches wide on the cut width and 18 feet long, which I think might actually be the biggest router sled that has been built. I don't know, link down in the comments if you know of any uh, router surfing tables that have been bigger than 84 by 18. I think the widest I've seen is 72 inches. Anywho, so this is a um, 3D sketch of what I'm building. 84 inches wide, 18 feet long. And then this is a bit of a cross section. That's an individual one of these bunks. And then another key feature of the machine that makes it very beastly is it's actually going to be featuring 10 horsepower. So generally router sleds are 3 to 5. I think there's one out there that's 7 horse but mostly there are three to five horsepower and the cutters are bolted directly onto the induction motor so you're very limited on your RPM. And you can also only ever use one cutter. So the manufacturers will make a custom carbide cutter that bolts directly onto the motor shaft and that's what you get. So something that's different with my machine, this guy, this is an R8 spindle and just set that back down. Extremely heavy. So it is something that you would normally see in uh, a CNC machine that cuts steel. So this is my knee mill. In here I have... <laughs> Hello, again. Great timing as always. He always seems to come in right when I'm filming. Anywho, not 100% sure where I was at, but I know that I showed you the spindle, so this is something more akin to what you would see in a CNC machine for cutting metal. Uh, it has a R8 collet system, so it's the same as a general knee mill. And what that allows you to do is use any cutter that you want. So let's see here. So this bad guy. This is a shoulder mill on an arbor with a R8 collet built in. Go ahead and put that back. 
but you could even run that um, large cutter in this surfacing table. But what's nice is they also have, let me also show you what drawer. These. So these are R8 Collets standard. But what's nice is um, I think they're good up to 7 eighths. So any cutter out there that you can find that has a shank either 7 eighths or 3 quarters inch and smaller can go in my router surfacing table. And then when you need to do bigger cutters you could do fly cutters, you could do like what I showed you a second ago, shell mills, you could have normal end mills, um, basically any, any cutter that you can find that can go in a router or a mill pretty much, you'll be able to put on the router surfacing table. And the benefit of that is when you're stuck with just one cutter, what happens if it doesn't cut good on epoxy? Or what happens if it tears out too much on one of your woods that's local to your area? If you're stuck with the one cutter, you don't have any real options um, if you run into issues like that. Where with my system, you can put any cutter in, so if you run into a scenario where you're not getting the finish that you like, you can change it. And the other thing is I'm not limited on RPM. So instead of bolting the cutter to directly to the motor shaft, I went with a system much similar to what you see on an email. So I also have an induction motor, but I will have a belting system that connects the motor to the spindle. So I can basically have belting in there that allows me to peek at the RPM that I want to peek at. My last table I peaked at 12,000 RPM, which I was quite happy with. I'll link a video of it cutting right now. So that's using, uh, what was that, an inch and a half cutter. And I was cutting a half inch deep and traveling at roughly four to five hundred inches per minute and with this new system I should be able to almost travel maybe I think I'm spec for a thousand inches a minute um, while I'm cutting and you're gonna be able to remove a lot more material by having a higher RPM and just traveling faster instead of having a giant cutter which I mean to be fair like you, you can put the six inch cutter in it's just you'll get a nicer finish with a smaller cutter. So I have a lot of flexibility with my system. You can put pretty much any cutter that you want and I'm not limited on RPM. So it, it'll be way more powerful than anything else out there, especially since it also has the extra horsepower. It's gonna be at 10 horsepower. The most common I've seen is three horsepower. And the other extremely important feature is forklift loadability. So I learned the lesson back on the original table that me and my dad put together, which you can see a little bit more about that story and some videos of that guy in my intro video. But I learned manhandling slabs is not fun if you can't, if there's no way built into the table to make it easy to load the tables. So what I did is I spent extra time on the design and engineering to figure out how to make this table 100% forklift loadable. So instead of my gantry riding on rails that are the highest point of the table, I actually dropped the rails down 8 inches. So in this little diagram, you can see that's the top of the bunk, that's the rail. This one's probably a bit easier to see. So this is what the gantry rides on, and I have 8 inches of clearance from what's going to be the top of the table to that rail. So what that means is you can drive up with the forklift, put your slab on, and back it right on out. You don't have to shake your forks. You don't have to drag something off of your forks. You can literally just drive up, set it down, back out, and start flattening things. 
and I will go over this in a bit more detail in a different video but what allows me to have both the ability to build any machine size at any length and have it perfectly flat and have the drop down side rails is these this is my leveling system so how this works is you level this to earth in a swivel belt bearing right here with these four bolts then you also have adjustment up and down and what that allows you to do is completely separate of the precision of the machine you can align the rails that the gantry actually rides on so I don't have to have a machine base that is CNC machined all perfectly flat I can bolt together this thing like Legos each two foot section is its own bunk each one of those braces is in two feet sections the side rails are in two feet sections and I can build a 40 foot slab flattener if I really felt like it or even a 100 inch wide slab flattener the precision on my base has n almost no importance because my leveling system after the fact after I'm done with the table I can go in and perfectly align those levelers so that leveling system accomplishes two things it makes it so I can make the tables forklift loadable and it also makes it so that I can make the tables literally any size I can make an 80 foot table long or an 80 foot long table if I really felt like it or if there was a customer that wanted one and basically the precision of the machine instead of being stuck with the precision of the base the actual precision of the machine is completely based on the leveling so whether you're using just normal bubble levels, machinist levels, uh, hydro levels, or even if you wanted to be extremely precise for like a CNC router, uh, you could even use laser levels and get this machine completely perfect, um, no matter what size I make it. And lastly, the one of the largest benefits of my table, which he's calling the beast, is that it is completely automated. So instead of having to run the machine with a joystick or forbid having to hand push it all the time, you can leave this machine, this router sled, completely alone while it's working. So instead of sucking up countless man hours having someone hand push the thing or even running it with a joystick, you can set up a couple parameters and hit go and it will actually flatten the entire layer of the table top by itself. But not only that, after it's done with the first layer, it will actually return to the start, lower itself, and start the next pass. So if you have a super warped slab that you have to take, in and take down from three inches down to two and a half inches, you can just set it on, hit go, and it will automatically just continue to step down. And then it also has stuff set up so that on the last pass, it will actually switch from heavy cutting parameters down to something um, better akin for finishing so it'll have a higher RPM, slower travel speed, it'll have less step over and a couple of other things but yeah so it's a 100% automatic slab flattener you don't have to make the decision to suck up man hours and have to hire another employee to keep your investment running or let your investment just sit in the corner not making you money you can at all times have your machine flattening slabs well, you're doing something that's actually making you money. So it's a win-win. You basically get a free employee with my table system. So now I am going to start um, the fabrication of this thing. So first up, let's see my drawings here. I am making the bunks. So first I'm making these two pieces. So sadly, I'm going to have to open my door a little bit, let in a little bit of the cold. Um, hopefully the heater can keep up, keep it a little bit warmer in here. But we're going to start up with cutting some angle iron for the uh, supports. And if you would like to see a better picture of what I'm talking about, I am first making these guys right here this little angle support piece that goes on my bumps. 
and I don't know if I've already stated this, but this one is a CNC router slash plasma. And it is rocking aluminum side rails, but these will eventually be replaced with solid steel. Yeah, so let's get started.